Hello and welcome to part 3 of the Among Us series and in today's video we're going to work with Socket.io and implement rooms because if we're gonna have people playing this we need to separate the games into rooms. If you want to support the channel then just watch the video to the end, that's enough for me. Uh, so let's jump into the code now. So when we start to think about separating players into rooms, we want people to be able to invite their friends into the same room, right? And the easiest way I know how is to have the room identifier as part of the URL. So we add something called a query parameter, and you probably recognize it from the when the URL has a question mark, and then there's a property name equal sign value. So it could, for example, be question mark room equals Daniel's room or something like that. So we can start by just adding some utility functions to the client side so that we can work with this uh, URL parameter to, to get it, but also to update it. So let's start there. And this is one of those things that you, you don't have to reinvent the the wheel it's a perfect like stack overflow question where you can google it find a snippet and then try it out see that it works and i already have these utility functions in other projects so the first thing we could do is to put these utility functions in the utils um what do they call it file i will copy the first one here the input is the name of the property that we want from the, the query string and then we pass in the URL but we don't have to because it's defaulted to window location href so if we just do get query parameter room then we should get uh, the value of that parameter the second function the second function is update query parameter and there we have to pass in what key we want to change and the value that we want to update it to and same thing here we don't have to pass the URL if we want it to be window location.href so let's quickly try this out in the browser just to make sure that they work as we expect I will declare it here without the export and then do get query parameter room now it doesn't exist and then we get back null so that's good to know that it's null if uh, if it doesn't exist now let's add it so i do question mark room equals test and declare it again and then room and then we get back test okay that that was as expected the second one seemed to return a string here uh, in that case, we need to take that string and uh, replace the URL with that string. So let's declare this one, update query parameter, room, should be room2. And then we get back the correct string, but room is no longer test, it's room2. We do const room equals get query parameter room so room will either be a string or it will be null we also need to import oh it imported it for me here if a player connects without having a room it might be a good idea to generate a random room id for them so we could make another utility function that is get random string. I will take in length here. Okay, so we can do for let i equals zero, i less than length, and then i plus plus. So we will loop for the amount of length that we pass in. We need a place to store this, so we can do const letters 
empty array hex letters let's just use the hex letters a b c d e f and we can also use 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8, 9. that will be a nice amount of characters to choose from so we do then this should be letters letters and then here we will um, take a random value from hex then we can do uh, letters i we do hex math dot floor and then we do math dot random and then we multiply that by the hex dot length so here we will get a random value between zero and the length of the hex and then we need to round it down so it becomes an index equals and then we return letters but this is an array of letters now so we need to do join on that one so let's try this one out in the browser and see that it works as we expect get random string 5 yeah nice so then we can go back to the client code so if this one is null we instead do get random string and let's use 5 and this room we are going to pass that to socket io on the initialization of it so here we are actually going to add a query parameter room equals i will convert these to ticks so we can do we can interpolate here dollar curly brace and then room so then we can parse out this room variable on the server side so let's go to the server side so here we have io.on connection so we can do const room equals socket dot hand shake dot query dot room Okay, so we have the room and to tell socket io to um, to have this socket join a room we can do socket dot join room and then we need to we need to tell everyone in the room that there is a new player io dot two room emit player joined that should be everything we need to test this out so here we can do console log room and actually print the variable okay so before we start the server back up let's set the room to test on one of them and the other one will just leave as is so our, if everything works we should see the test being printed for one of the clients and this client should receive a random room name and then have that one printed on the server side so let's see the clients are trying to connect to the server over and over so we should be able to see it okay the test one actually connected and there the random one connected so let's see if we can get this one to also connect to test room equals test so there we got test and play connected so now they should on the socket io side be in the same room so let's verify this also on the client side so we can do socket dot on player joined I do a callback 
and we just console log player joined. So let's go to the browser and this one is in test 2. So if I change the room here to test 2 and reload, we should see player join and we did see it right here. So that's awesome. So the final thing we need to do is to make sure that we update the query parameter for the room so that they are in line with each other. So we can do window.history.replace state. We pass in no data for the first one. The second one is title, then we can use document.title. We don't want to change it. And here we can use our function that we created update query parameter room and then the room variable. So let's try this out. So if we reload without having a room, we get a random one and it is updated in the URL. And if we already had a room set, it, nothing should change. So that seems to work. So thanks for watching, like the video if you liked it, and I hope you had fun and learned something about rooms in Socket.io. See you next time!